quiet now for you video game fans. Since it's 2015, I hope you don't have to play video games where using your hands is like a baby's toy. Yeah, I totally forgot. 2015, it's the future, according to Robert Zemeckis. But let's not get too carried away. 2014 was a pretty good year for video games. Let's get to it. Starting with number 10, Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors. Okay, obviously I know for diehard Legend of Zelda fans, you're waiting for a real Zelda game for the Wii U, not including, you know... Wind Waker HD, which was good too, but, you know, it, it did fix up a few things with the ocean, and this one is more, obviously, like uh, Dynasty Warriors with Zelda characters, and I will admit it does get a little monotonous slashing through enemies, but it still actually has its charm. I mean, you got the Zelda characters, like, of course, Link himself and Zelda and all the bombs and weapons and such, so it could be enjoyable, but I respect people who don't like it and obviously are anticipating a real Zelda game, which has yet to come, not to get too carried away. But it's enjoyable for what it is. Number nine, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Yeah, Toad actually has his own video game for the first time. Of course, you did get to play as him in other games like Super Mario 2, Doki Doki Mario. But this one, it, it does seem like it's, you know, it was introduced in Super Mario 3D World on Wii U, which was a great game, and it did seem tedious at some points, you know, and some people I can understand didn't like this concept, I respect that, but I hate to say it, but it's actually pretty enjoyable and makes great use of the Wii U gamepad. Having to move side to side, as I said, it does get a little annoying and tedious, but if you can handle it like, like I did, it's actually pretty enjoyable and it really makes great use for a Mario spin-off type game. Pretty good, Nintendo. You made a great another Great game with that, and it's great use of the Wii U gamepad. Number eight, Assassin's Creed. Okay, this is a tie between Assassin's Creed Rogue and Assassin's Creed Unity. I think both games were good. They're obviously both different for good, you know, different reasons. Um, but, um, okay, I respect that if some people like one better than the other, I respect that. But it was tough to decide. They're both different, as I said before. And I think the Assassin's Creed series is still going pretty well. Um, even though they take different approaches. But, hey, sometimes you just got to take a chance in life. And I'd say way to go. Once again, Ubisoft, you did good. Number seven, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Okay, I've already reviewed this one. Not much to say. It is a great sequel to Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. Um, and this one's obviously on the Wii U. It makes... Um, well, not, okay, it doesn't make as much great use of the Wii U gamepad as uh, Toad, you know, Toad Treasure Tracker does, but it's still a blast. I mean, being able to finally play as Cranky Kong is pretty cool. The level designs are really cool. Um, it's a blast. Just watch my review on this one. I know I'm going to say this a bunch more times before, but really, it's great. Number six, South Park Stick of Truth. Okay, um, obviously I had a review coming for this one. It got posted owned, but to keep it short, sweet, and to the point, there were a bunch of South Park games made before this one for the N64 slash PS1 slash Dreamcast, and they all sucked. The Chef's Love Shack one was okay, even though it was all rip-off of Mario Party. The Go-Kart one was horrible. The first one was really bad, and finally, we got a break with this one. We knew it was going to be good. It was in production hell for a while because of uh, THQ going bankrupt, and then, of course, Ubisoft took over, and... Thank the freaking Lord it delivered. It's obviously um, like Final Fantasy and the Mario RPG games. Yeah, it's an RPG style game. We fight enemies and work your way around. They get upgrades and it has great cutscenes. If you love the show, they definitely, I can tell they put a lot of effort into really pleasing the fans of the show in this one. It's really good. But parents, be cautioned. This game, just like the TV show, it's not for kids. I would be very cautioned on that one. Number five. Alien Isolation. Okay, I know I didn't really talk about this too much, but if you like the movies, it's a great game. Um, obviously, it plays a different character, and it acts as like a sequel, even though it does actually have voice of Sigourney Weaver herself. And obviously, okay, I don't hate this kind of game because it's a stealth mode, and if you watch the movies, you know you have to sneak up on the alien himself. I just suck at these kind of games, like Hitman, you know, and some of the missions on Assassin's Creed where you don't just go all out and shoot everything in sight and kill everything. It's just, it's a straight-up stealth mode type game, so it's enjoyable, but it's not for everybody. 
But if you love the Alien movies and you're looking for this kind of game, it's definitely worth it. Number four, Marvel Lego Super Heroes. Another one that I reviewed, not much to say. It's a blast. I know it's Lego characters, but hey, come on, they did great with Indiana Jones and Pirates of the Caribbean and Batman games and such and Star Wars. But in this one, it's certainly no exception to Marvel Super fans, uh, the superhero fans. It's wow. It's awesome. All the characters, the X-Men, Spider-Man, the Avengers. It's wow. It'll ha it'll have you drooling. Like, literally, for any Marvel fan. Definitely a must-have. Number three, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. I know Call of Duty is getting repetitive, but hey, this one has a voice, or I'd say appearance by Kevin Spacey himself, which got hyped up, I will admit. But the game is still pretty cool. Um, it's arcade style. It's really fun, and I'd give this one a chance, even if you didn't like last year's. It's definitely an improvement. So, I know I say that every year, but really, it's that good. Number two, Mario Kart 8. Okay, not much to say. Another game that I reviewed for the Wii U. Um, excellent racing game. Obviously, of course, the only criticism is that, um, of course, the the balloon battle mode is not on a squared type of course, and, you know, there's no tracker and everything. It's pretty boring and lame, but the regular racing mode and, of course, the online mode being that, aside from Mario Kart 7 on 3DS, this is the only home console version of Mario Kart since Nintendo Wii and the original DS shut down their Wi-Fi, so no more Super Smash Bros. Brawl Online, no more Mario Kart Wii Online. This one, I can tell, is taking up the torch, and it's taking it up very well. More characters, seven Koopa kids. Um, the online, as I said before, is a blast. All the vehicle customization parts, it keeps you busy for a while. And even downloadable content is awesome too. Being able to play as Link in the freaking land of Hyrule on a Mario Kart game. And even the F-Zero track and the Tanuki Mario. Oh, sweet. Lord, I can't say much more of how awesome this game is. It's so great. Definitely one of the many reasons to buy Mario, to buy a Nintendo Wii U. Aside from Mario 3D World and of course... The next one on the list, but didn't I mention? Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS. Okay, both are great. Okay, the 3DS one I was actually really surprised with. I mean, I didn't know how well a handheld console was capable of handling these type, type of gameplay and graphics. It is limited, though, with the, you know, it doesn't include the, um, the big arenas, because, you know, you got to admit the you know the limitations, as I said before, with the handheld console, but I think it does really well. Graphics are a little, you know, as what you'd expect for a handheld console, but it still does really well. It brings all the characters in that the Wii U version has, but there were some complaints about some of the zooming and the um, the fact that if you play too much, some people apparently have had history of breaking their uh, analog stick on their 3DS, but it has everything. The online mode, all the characters, all there, but I would go for the Wii U version, trust me. I have played the Wii U version, don't worry, review... Game reviews are kind of tough for me to get around now with the, this whole problem that I said before about trying to get around it, but I've been working on Stick of Truth review. But I've played Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. Let me just say, I knew it was going to be better. It's way more polished, and the capabilities of a home console like the Wii U itself, wow. I was just drooling by the mouth. I was hooked on, on this version. All the characters, the graphics, everything is just... You can't ask for anything better. In some cases, it might even be better than than uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. I mean, not to insult that game. That had a lot to it. But this one was just freaking awesome. I mean, I got hooked. The new characters I had to try out, like Mega Man, Little Mac, Rosalina, Wii Fit Trainer. You even get extras like the Duck Hunt Dog. Um, you got Pac-Man. Not much I can say. If you don't have a Wii U, you want to get a Wii U, and if you have one... Man, this is definitely one you have to have. The online mode is great. It's all there. It's just absolutely way better than the 3DS version. Not to insult that one, but this one is the one to get. So, until next time, happy gaming.